Hi, NPFL Bass Pro Gary Atkins here with your weekly TRS Tackle Tip of the Week. This week I decided to do a segment on the A-Rig. It's a great way to put big fish on the boat from early spring to late fall. And today we're going to go through the A-Rig that I use, the jig heads I like to rig it with, swim baits, and then we'll get into the rod and reel combination that I use to throw the A-Rig on. So let's start with the A-Rig itself. Um, over the years, I've used several A-Rigs, but I always find myself going back to the Umbrella Rig by Yum, the Flash Mob Jr. For whatever reason, it just seems to put bigger fish in the boat, and it's very durable. So that's why I use the Yum Umbrella Rig by Yum. Uh, the jig heads that I typically use to rig it with are the Matt Allen Series Swim Bait Head by Dirty Jigs. It is a great jig head. It's got a great bait keeper on it. And there's nothing worse than making a long cast with an A-Rig, reeling it in, and finding out that one of your swim baits has slid down the hook. So the bait keeper on this swim bait head is a great keeper, and it keeps the bait right where it needs to stay. Uh, the swim baits that I like to use are typically Kytex. I like to use a 3.3 early in the year when the water temperatures are a little cold. Or I may even use an uh, Easy Shiner. Uh, it's got a thinner profile, as you can see. It imitates our smelt here in the Great Lakes and our Emerald Shiner. And then as the water warms up, I will use um, a 3.8 Swing Impact Fat. And really, there's only three colors that I throw on the Great Lakes. And that's uh, the Electric Shad. It's a minnow imitation, a little blue flake in it. Uh, the Gobi. Everybody knows about the Gobies in the Great Lakes. Um, it's a great, great imitation for the Gobi. And then if the water's got a little bit of color in it, you may see me go to a um, sexy shad, but only if the water's got a little color in it. Otherwise, I stick to either the Gobi or the, the Easy Shiner or, or the Electric Shad. As far as setting up a A-Rig, um, there's a couple ways you can set them up. I see a lot of people, when they pull it out of the package, first thing they do is they take two wires, they bend them up, you know, and they make sure they're even across the top. They bend the two wires down, and the long one in the center, they'll make sure it's dead, directly centered out of the middle. Um, yeah, you can set it up like that, and you can catch a lot of fish that way, but that's not the way I like to set them up. And I'm going to go through the way I set them up, and I'm going to give you the reasons why as I do it. So let's put this one down. Here's another A-Rig. I've set up the way I like to do it. So when I take it out of the package, first thing I do is I take the two wires on top, I bend them up, I space them evenly, I make sure they're on the same plane on the top, directly on, across from each other, and nice and even. The, the other three wires, what I want to do is I want to make sure they're even across the bottom, evenly spaced, or I may even take the center one, the longer one, and bend it just a little bit lower than the two on the sides. And I'm going to tell you why I do that. Because when I rig this with the jig heads, I am going to take an eighth ounce here, an eighth ounce here, and I'm going to put a quarter in the middle. Because that quarter ounce, that eighth ounce heavier weight, it's going to make this bait keel even through the water. Because if they were all the same, same weight, coming through the water column, this bait could ride like this or like this, or maybe even upside down. I've seen that happen too. But by having that eighth ounce heavier bait, our jig head in the middle, it's always going to fall to the center, it's always going to fall the lowest, and that bait's going to come through the water column evenly. Now, now, no matter what size jig heads I put on this, it's always going to be just a little heavier in the center. Um, as far as the two top wires, here in Wisconsin, we're only allowed three hooks. A lot of guys will run dummies on top. I typically don't do that. Once in a great while, I will. But what I do is I'll take spinners, the same sizes that comes on the the umbrella rig um, on the flash mob junior here and I will put them up on top also what that's going to help me is that even keel you're going to get even pressure from both of these and it's going to help that bait keel even through the water column because if you can keep it even it looks more natural through the water column and it's going to trigger more and bigger strikes here's one that I rigged up and I was actually used this last fall before I put the rod away for the year um, as you can see, I've got them in a perfect line. I've got them spread evenly. I've got the two top wires spread evenly through the gap. 
on both the lower wires. And this one comes through the water perfect. It, um, I don't want them too close because what will happen sometimes is these baits will tangle and they'll hook one another. So I make sure they're evenly spaced and they're spaced far enough to where they're not going to hook each other on a long cast. So that's typically how I would rig them up. And trust me, I put a lot of big fish in the boat over the years setting them up just like this one here. As you can see, the spinners, the swim baits. This one's got three threes because it was late fall. Water temperature is like 43 degrees. And um, I, I had a little smaller presentation. As far as the rod and reel combination, I've used several over the years. But the best one that I have found is this Shimano X-Pride. It's a 7 foot, 7 inch, heavy action rod. I need that length to make that long cast with that heavy A-Rig. If I have a rod that's too soft or too short, I'm not going to get the distance that I want out of that A-Rig. And um, it's not going to trigger as many strikes. And also I've got it paired up with a Daiwa Tatula TWS bait casting reel. Spooled with 20 pound Seaguar and Vizex. Um, a lot of guys will use braid on their A rigs, but I think over the years the fish got conditioned to that. You can hear that line going through the rod uh, guides and that translate down the line and into the bait. It seemed like they get, at first, when it first came out and we were doing that, it seemed to work fine, but over time I just seemed like I got less bites. So when I went to the fluorocarbon, again I got more strikes and that's why I stuck with it. Now, as far as everything that I talked about today, um, it all can be purchased at the Real Shot. If you use promo code GARY10, you can save 10% on all your online purchases for an all tackle in the store and apparel. Um, please take advantage of it. Well, like I said before in my earlier videos, we'll be here every week with a promo code. Take advantage of it. Hope this tackle tip helps you put more fish in the boat. And until next week, I hope to see you on the water.